All right, hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Sick Designs here again, and uh, today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make realistic renders, uh, such as this picture right here, which I just did. Um, so you can see here we got some really nice reflections and some very accurate uh, shadowing as well. Uh, just overall, just a nice scene. Looks very clean, lots of detail. Uh, looks really good, actually. So today, um, I'm going to teach you guys how to accomplish this, how to get this kind of look for different scenes and stuff you might be doing. Uh, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so basically, this is the whole setup here, um, the scene before it's rendered. This is what it looked like. I just got done doing this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go to File, New, uh, Start Fresh, uh, so you guys can see exactly how this is going to work and come together. Um, so first of all, I'd like to say that you're going to need um, Grayscale Gorilla um, HDR Light Kit um, 1.5. That's what I have. And, uh, you know, whatever, just find a model or something that you want to use for your scene. It can be text, it can be a sphere, anything you want. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead and install that. I'm not going to cover this or cover that in this tutorial. Um, but anyways, uh, we're just going to go up to our content browser here and once you have the HDR light kit installed, you're going to find it uh, in your content browser. It'll be labeled Grayscale Gorilla HDR light kit pro 1.5. Once you have that, then you have all these options for HDR skies and all these different uh, preset lights um, that really help light your scenes a lot easier, a lot quicker and make your whole scene just look overall a lot better. Um, so the first thing, uh, once you have this, or if you already have this, we're gonna, just going to drop in the HDR Baker, uh, the HDR Sky. We're going to go ahead and drop in an overhead softbox and this uh, regular softbox right here. We're going to go into Studios, and I really like this one, so I'm going to use uh, Studio L. I'm going to drop that in the scene as well. Okay, so, um, whoops. So now we have that, um, pretty much all we have to do now is go ahead and start dropping our objects in there and tweaking some render settings and things. So what I'm going to do here is go into the render settings, um, option, render setting options here. I'm going to come down to save and I'll save this as a PNG because that's a really good format to save high quality images in. And we'll come down to effect. We'll go ahead and add in some ambient occlusion and some global illumination. And um, we're going to change the GI mode to IR plus QMC still image. Uh, change the gamma to about 1.8 and the diffuse, diffuse depth to about 2. And in the radiance catch tab, we're going to bring the stochastic samples and record density down to low just for the time being to kind of speed up the render times. Uh, in the final render, you're probably going to want to go back and change these to at least medium. Um, but for right now, we're just going to leave them at low. And I'm going to leave the anti-aliasing to geometry right now. And in case you don't know what anti-aliasing is, um, that's basically, um, you know, how smooth the reflections and things of that nature look as far as the edges of them. You know, they won't look quite so jagged if you say change that to best and bring the minimum and maximum levels up. But once again, uh, to speed up rendering times, we're just going to leave that at geometry for now. And in the save tab, you're going to go ahead and want to save this as something. So I'll just call it um, uh, HDRI tutorial. Whoops. All right. And so whenever I'm rendering this, uh, the image will be saved to the desktop. So we have that, and there's one more thing that we need to drop in here I forgot. Uh, let's go back into our light kit. Uh, drop in the global light switch here. And you want to put this below everything. Um, that'll turn off the default lights that Cinema 4D uses. Um, so now that we have that, uh, what we're going to do now is I also have a free model kit, uh, which is what you saw with that van um, from Grayscale Gorilla. So I recommend you go ahead and download that. It's got a couple um, pre-made uh, models you can drop into your scenes. Like I said, it's free. So once again, I'm just going to be using this van. All right. 
and so now that we got that in our scene, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this soft box here. I'm going to click on it or double click on it here in the hierarchy. And uh, down here you'll see the controls. Um, so this is how you control like everything, the light, the color, the brightness, uh, distance, everything, rotation. So what I'm going to do is uh, rotate it around here. And actually I'm going to do it from the side here. And I'm going to bring it back a little bit and I'm also going to make the light extended a little bit more so what I'm going to do is come down to the sizing options and just stretch it out and make it a little bit taller um, okay and maybe bring it over here a little bit I'm going to take my little model van here and I'm going to rotate it uh, just make things a little bit more interesting um, Let's go ahead and bring this up a little bit over here. Okay. And now I'm just going to grab this um, overhead softbox right here. I'm going to bring the overall scale down a little bit because it doesn't need to be that big. Um, now what we're going to do is actually I'm going to bring it back. And I'm going to rotate it. And it looks like it's still a little bit too big for my liking. So I'm going to adjust it some more. Okay and maybe bring it over a little bit uh, as soon as this unfreezes bring it up a little bit more okay so we have that um, maybe just a little bit closer alright so we have that uh, now what I'm going to do is on the overhead softbox here you're going to see the light color uh, by default it's set to white I kind of like the subtle uh, kind of orangish golden brown and mixed in with a little bit of light blue look so what I'm going to do if I want to change the color of the light is select selected color and when you're working with these overhead soft boxes and these type of lights you don't have to like you know use a color this dark I mean a little will go a long way so something very subtle like that color you're immediately going to see the difference and even that might be a little bit too much so do something like that so pretty subtle uh, and for this one for the soft box here off to the right hand side uh, I'm gonna make that a subtle light blue so I'm gonna go here to the blues and just select something pretty subtle so that's pretty subtle um, so there we go so if we go ahead and give this a quick render uh, this will take some time because we are using global illumination as a matter of fact yeah make sure you select ambient inclusion too uh, in your render settings that'll also help um, see so yeah, I think we're ready to do a quick test render I'm not quite sure how long this will take um, but yeah, this will definitely make your uh, all your scenes and all your images or renders or whatever you do look really, really good. Um, I do not recommend this, though, for animations. Um, I mean, because this will just take such a long time. If you get a, long, um, like a lot of time to just sit and wait, then, you know, go for it. But, uh, you know, typically you don't want to, you know, use this method for animations there's other ways for animations you can still kind of get this clean like really nice look but like I said it's, uh, regardless it's gonna take a while the better it looks the longer it's gonna take which makes sense there's a lot more calculations and whatnot uh, to go through so as you can see here as it's rendering right now you can see this looks uh, pretty good so we're just gonna let that uh, finish up here I'm not sure how long it will take um, that the image I first showed you uh, took about nine minutes and 50 seconds so roughly 10 minutes to render out that one frame so you can imagine if you've got if you're rendering around an animation that's 90 frames long you know that's gonna take a long time if it takes 10 minutes a frame so that's just reinforcing my point All right, so this is about done. All 
Okay, so as you can already tell, this looks very nice. Uh, we got some really nice um, reflections on the van. As you can see here, um, very nice, subtle, soft shadows. You kind of, you can get the hint of the subtle orangish uh, color being uh, casted onto the van, as well as the blue over here coming from this side. Um, you know, it looks, uh, looks like a very clean render, you know, very nice. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it guys. It's, uh, this method will really work with pretty much any model or anything you use. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much that. Now, after seeing that, I want to show you something. If we take out the global light switch, HDR sky, Baker, take out the overhead softbox, the regular softbox, take this studio out, drop in a floor. Okay, and let's just go ahead and reposition the van here. Bring it down a little bit. Let's bring it forward. Okay, and let's say we go into our render settings. And I know uh, for a lot of you guys, if you're just uh, take off ambient occlusion, so we'll get rid of that. Let's get rid of global illumination and whatnot. And what we'll do is we'll just drop in a light, just a regular old light. Uh, standard that Cinema 4D comes with. Um, I know if you're just starting with Cinema 4D, you're going to have a lot of questions and not understand a lot of things. And uh, a lot of you are probably going to have this problem. Now, see, if I go ahead and go to render this, um, you can definitely tell from what I just had to what I have now, there is a huge difference in uh, the quality as far as reflections and just the overall image, it, you know, how it looks. Uh, compare that um, to this image right here. I mean, there's not even really any comparison there, to be honest. Um, and a lot of you guys I know that are just starting or want to learn more about it are going to have this problem. You don't quite understand, you know, how global illumination works and all, and that's fine. Uh, everybody's like that. I was like that when I first started, and uh, so I just wanted to let you guys know. I mean. If you're looking for, you want to get a really nice looking scene, looks really realistic, um, there's going to be a little bit of work involved. I mean, it, like I said, you know, it's not as simple as just dropping the model in there, dropping in a light, and you know, it looks that good. Uh, there's a little bit more to it, but uh, once you kind of get the basic gist of how it works, uh, you know, this won't be a problem for you, but uh, that just really goes to show you uh, how much, you know, lighting and a simple little studio setup uh, can make your models or your text or whatever you're using look that much better. And like I said, there's really no comparison uh, comparing this image to the other render. So uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. And I really do hope it helped you out. If it did, um, please subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. And uh, I think that'll do it for this tutorial, and uh, I'll see you guys later, so peace out.